Good morning all. I, Rajvi Choksi, on behalf of MCT's Rajiv Gandhi Institute of Technology and Department of Computer Engineering, welcome you all to online FDP on AI and data science, the future for tomorrow. Our speaker for today's session is Dr. Subhash Sindesar. Dr. Subhash Sindesar has received B.E. degree in Computer Engineering from Maratwada University in July 1999. M.E. degree in Information Technology from University of Mumbai in Jan 2005, and Ph.D. from SGGS College of Engineering and Technology, Nanded. Affiliated to Swami Ramanandir Maratwada University, Nanded, in October 2012. He is presently holding position of Professor in Computer Engineering and Vice Principal at Lokmanya Tila College of Engineering, Navi Mumbai. He has worked as Chairman, Board of Studies in Computer Engineering under Faculty of Technology, University of Mumbai, and member of the Academic Council, BUTR, RRC of University of Mumbai from July 2015 to September 2019. Also member of Board of Study in Information Technology under Faculty of Engineering Technology of Pune University from July 2015 to August 2019. He has published about 48 papers in international and national journal conferences and one copyright on his name. He has written four books through reputed publishers. Under his supervision, five research scholars have passed out from University of Mumbai and four working towards their PhD. He has guided 30 postgrad students and three are ongoing. He is a live member of Indian Society of Technical Education, Computer Society of India, an International Association of Computer Science and Information Technology. He's a reviewer of a reputed journal like IEEE Transaction, Science Direct, in the Science and Springer. He's actively involved on many autonomous colleges and university aimed at designing syllabus, revision for undergrad and postgrad program, as well as working for the member of Academic Advisor Committee. I welcome you, sir, wholeheartedly and thank you for joining us today. I request you to enlighten us with your knowledge and experience. Thank you, ma'am. First, I'll share the screen. Good morning, I am audible. Yes, sir, you are audible. Okay. Uh, my screen visible, sir? Yes, sir, it is visible. Okay. Okay. Uh, thank you. First, uh, welcome uh, one and all for today's session. Uh, uh, with your the permission, can I continue the session, sir? Yes, yes sir. sir. Yes, sir. Uh, okay. Thank you. Yeah, today I'll uh, uh, talk, or uh, maybe I'll say we can discuss on to the trends in the recommendation system. So what's the outline for the today's uh, session? Briefly, I try to give what's the concept of the recommender system. Prior to that, uh, how the recommender system concept came, uh, what's the motivation behind that, one, and uh, what's the origin from that the recommendation system, uh, system concept came. After that, we'll see what are the different approaches of the recommender system. So that is the content-based collaborative and the context of a recommender system. Uh, after that, uh, the very important that's uh, used right now into the industry and the society, that's habit recommendation system. Then the each system having the pros and the cons. Uh, so considering the pros and the cons, what are the different challenges of the recommender system? If someone wanting to work in this particular the field, so what are the research directions? Which point we can elevate in this the, uh, recommendation system that we can discuss? After that, uh, uh, then we can see one case study, which is the live case study uh, present uh, uh, one of the uh, sector uh, that I have implemented. 
and uh, how exactly this work what the different algorithm is present and what's from the input to the output how exactly it goes uh, we can discuss through this case study after that we can summarize and what's the references that also we can discuss so uh, before going to the recommendation system let's we understand uh, uh, what's the current era of the digital what are the different parameters we are considering what are the different challenges we have it? and then we come into that the recommendation system so the web is the living of the era of the search and enter one of the discovery see if you see in the uh, 2020 and after that when we come to the 21st century uh, there is a, a lot of changes has happened and one more into that what we are facing since last two years uh, that is this pandemic situation due to the COVID. Uh, everyone is on to the online mode that may be from the child to the uh, topmost positions everyone is uh, in the online fashion they are doing the business they are learning everyone wants uh, something uh, related the informations uh, in the digital format because such a situation is happening and because of this, the COVID and the pandemic situation, there is much more importance come for this the digital environment, for the, this uh, uh, digital uh, video. So uh, when you talk about this, the uh, digitization, there are the two parameters it's coming. The very first parameter it's come, that is the search, and the next one is called as a discovery. So what is the search is what you do when you are looking for something. The search means uh, just I know into that one. So let's I want this particular the information. So then I am given that particular the keywords and I'm searching onto that. One. But that's fine because uh, I know that what I can say to that particular data, what I can say to that uh, the information, what keywords are supposed to be given, then the information is come. That's called as a search. But some another concept is come as a discovery is when something is wonderful that you don't know existed or don't know how to ask and find out. Many times I don't know how to fire the query. Many times I don't know the clear cut keywords to get the data from this the worldwide web. When you go into the shop or maybe into that, when you interact with the someone, so we are into the offline mode from by expressions from my the movement, from the body language, maybe the next person understand what I'm trying to say. But so when into that, the online boards into the this 21st century, everyone is online, then somewhat it's a difficult. If I want to ask some questions or maybe into, uh, as a, another mode, when I have to express something, uh, my words are not uh, much more proper. I'm not finding the exact word how to fire the query or how to explain the content to the audience. And that concept is coming somewhere into that discourse. So in this the uh, current uh, era, these two words are uh, in the very much competitive. The word search is very fine. Those are the competitive people. Those are the learned people, the qualified people. They know how to get it and how to uh, find out the data uh, from the World Wide Web. But the struggling the part is coming to the discovery. Many times, so many new things are the present, so many uh, new uh, concepts are the present, uh, so many new technologies present, so many new items uh, will come into that market. So many new concepts. At that time, the people don't know into that one and they are facing this issue. And that is called as a discovery. But fight is coming. Why, why this the problem is coming that the discovery? Because everyone we are working into that one. The best example for the search is the Google or maybe we are using the ask.com. Uh, any search engine we are using, we are firing the query, what you know into that one. Then the a million uh, of information is coming, the bulk of information come across to you. But from that, we are wondering into that one, that part is called as discovery. What I want, that's I'm not waiting for that. Because I'm not uh, given the input very proper. What is my requirement? That's many times I'm not clear into that one. I'm not uh, incorporated or maybe I'm not represent into the exact format. 
I don't know how to ask for the system to get a requirement as per my need. Then uh, the concept is coming to the discovery. So why this discovery uh, the coming to this era and the digital era? So the concept is coming this one in the one minute of, or in the one minute of uh, day, how much data will be uploaded? There are the so many social medias or maybe into that the uh, shopping websites or maybe the search engines, so many things are the present. So in the one minute of time, or the one you need 3.2 billion people are available in the online world. 3.2 billion people, if you take as a, any unit of time, the one minute, these are the people are available online. If one person upload into that, the, let's very minimum for average, if you take as a one gigabyte, one gigabyte into the 3.2 billion people, if you take the partition product or the multiplication of these one, so one gigabyte into the 3.2 billion, so how much data uploaded onto the internet, onto the world wide web. And when such a huge data uploaded into the internet, to get the actual data as per the requirement of the users, the system is definitely struggling. So that's why we are shifting from this uh, uh, digital environment from the search to the discovery. So when shifting from the search to the discovery, the existing methods, so we have learned about the AI, uh, you, have, uh, you know from that's when the concept is coming, uh, let's the machine learning. Then after one into that, the uh, big set into that, so that is called as a data science. So let's understand what's exactly the data science, why, uh, how the data science give the solution uh, for this the discovery. When you have the search engine that comes to the discovery. So how the data science uh, try to give the solutions to the discovery. So let's we understand what's the concept of the data science. Data science is aims to derive the knowledge from the big data efficiently and intelligently. So uh, the one year back, uh, uh, even the, the so many the conferences or so many the uh, international people they clear into that the data is you now new oil. And this is the new environment in the digital environment in the digital era the data is the new oil. When you talk about this is the oil, so from that oil, we can develop the uh, information, then from the information, it comes to the knowledge. And you all you know the now, uh, what's the importance of the oil in the day-to-day -day life, from that we can uh, create the different sort of, the maybe into that the petrol, maybe the gels, or maybe into that different type of the, uh, flavor you have created in the same fashion when it comes into that the uh, digital environment when the data is a crude oil or it's a new oil from that you have to convert the informations from that to convert to the knowledge then we have to understand the process into what's how you convert from the data to the informations and the informations to the knowledge so the basic purpose of the data to generate the knowledge or prior to the knowledge, you have to create the informations and from where you have to convert, you have to convert from the big data. So the normally previously we talk about the data, but since last uh, one decade, the concept come into that the big data. It's not related to the volume, it comes to the velocity, it's related to the variety. The different flavors are the different dimensions are present to the data. It's completely unstructured, semi structure. The data is coming to the continuous data with the big volume, data with the different uh, forms. And from this, all the data, we have to come, so we have to convert this data to the information, uh, the information to the knowledge. So the data is completely raw material, it's completely oil. And from that, we are converting the information. The information is the finished product, which used uh, for to take the decision. And we're collecting the so many information related to the particular one domain, particular the one field, then it comes to the knowledge and the knowledge that are used for the prediction purposes. So when you're doing this, uh, the very important concept into that one, it's work very efficiently and intelligently. So the data science, it's a big process. I'll come into that one, how you convert from the data to the information and the knowledge. Data science include the set of activities 
tools, methods that enable the data-driven activities in the science, business, medicines, and the world. It's a very broad field, data science. It's a very, very, very broad. It's a completely one program. Now in the years, we also started that the data science is completely one program. Because so many courses, we have to learn it. So many fields come into that. It's a completely a data driven activities. Uh, it's a moment not related to, to the one specific field. It's work into the business, it's work into the medicine, it's work into the world. In all the pages, the data science is the present. So if you see in the uh, here, there are the so many uh, interaction is happening. So the basic, uh, if you talk into that one, so uh, there are the six intersections is happening. And when the six interaction comes together, that come as a data science. So very, uh, very initial into that one, the very first is the mathematics and the statistical knowledge, which is very important to understand the data science. Because uh, in the data science, so much more work is related to the statistical fashion. And for the statics and the maths is very fundamental requirement into that one. Then second one into that, the substantial expertise. What is the expertise into that? You are the uh, businesses, you are the domain. And the next thing is in the, the hacking scheme. So when this everything is work into that uh, in the World Wide Web, in the digital environment, how you get the data from the proper users. Because when you have to work with the data science, the data is plays the very important role to that. And when it gets the uh, uh, data from the uh, very accurate people, from the accurate users, then you have to work with the machine learning algorithms. So many machines learning algorithms, you have to work it up to that one. So after that, you have to work some of the, because all the existing algorithm not work because the data is coming to the different forms. Then some of the traditional research not happen. You have to work some, you are the own in your matter to convert this the data to the informations. And when these informations are converted to the knowledge, so that knowledge also keep it related to the your domain. So not the normal people can be directly interact uh, such type of the knowledge. So that's we are using for the prediction filter. So that's concept into that uh, danger zone. So it's coming related to the ethical issues, unethical issues, how to protect for the unethical issues, that also the part will come into that. So in short, the data science, it's the uh, uh, interaction of all the, it's a, maybe it's a multidisciplinary field. So one of the applications we are discussing for today's lecture that is called as a recommendation system, it's apply the domain specific knowledge at a very large scale and understand both the algorithm and the results. So I'll, I'll talk much more about the recommendation system. Uh, then, uh, before going into that, just I clear the data science is completely multidisciplinary. It's required the statics, the probability, then machine learning and the deep learning. Uh, that's required to understand or to create the model, to create the uh, some uh, learning model. We require as a pattern recognition. Then it's come to the NLP, natural lingu uh, language processing, as well as the text mining. Then coming into that, the Prescriptive analysis, this is one more concept into that. You know already the descriptive and the predictive. The descriptive analysis, it's talk uh, about the past, what happened in the uh, last history. The predictive, it's talk about the future. But the pres uh, prescriptive analysis, it's clear what should we do. If something is happened, if, uh, if you're doing some business, if you're doing some sort of the analysis, if something is happened, then the question is coming, what should we do? And to give that the answer that this uh, prescriptive analysis you have to work. So the many people, uh, they have work about uh, that's the descriptive and the predictive, but the, now the job is coming to the prescriptive analysis into the data science and the data science uh, given the solutions related to this predictive, uh, prescriptive analysis where uh, very powerful mathematical optimizations uh, comes there. Then the data science is the, uh, also, uh, in the data science, we go for the information retrieval. Also, statistical computing language, uh, like as R programming, now the Python programming, also much more used in the data science. These are the statistical computing language that helps to create the data to the knowledge. 
So quickly uh, moving uh, into the data science process, uh, because I'm directly switching to the application of the data science, because let's understand what's the data science process. So the data science process, uh, 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 the very first part is coming to the business understanding. When you talk about the data science, the very first requirement is come as the business understanding. If you understand the business, then and then you can develop the prescriptive model, you can develop the descriptive model, you can develop the predictive model. If you not understand the business, uh, then it's very difficult to develop the model. So all the data scientists or the data analysis, they first understand the business, what exactly the business is. So if it goes to the Amazon, if it goes to the any uh, business into that, the first it is very clear into that, what the business, what's the vision of the business, how the business is supposed to work uh, with the uh, different steps. And then and then, so all the models are built up there. So when the business uh, understanding is very clear, so then it comes to the data understanding. So we already clear into that the data is a new oil. The data is come from the different places, maybe from the social media, from users, from the mails, from so and so, from the YouTube, from the IoT. So many data is come. So uh, which type of the data are we supposed to take? Which type of target we require? So that full part is coming to the data understanding. So whatever the data is coming, uh, input to the R system, we cannot use it as it is. We have to do the pre-processing and that's called as a data pre preparation. We have to do the pre-processing onto that. So uh, there are the uh, different steps you have to follow. This again, the most uh, area that is the data pre-processing or the data preparations. Also right now industry facing about the data pre-processing that's called as the data preparations. If this is a very clear into that one, we can easily develop the models. So when you talk about the data modelings, we, we are developing the model. There are the different algorithm, machine learning algorithms, the deep learning algorithms and that comes into that in the data model. So which gives the solution of the prescriptive analysis, predictive analysis or the descriptive analysis. And if it is correct, it comes to the evaluations. And from the evaluations, again, go back to the business understanding before going to the deployment. If the business understanding is clear, so what we require into that one, if I get it, then, then it can deploy it. Otherwise, again, the process come back to the till the evaluations. Here also, uh, again, uh, go to the back in the same one in the data understanding. In the data understanding, as well as the data preprocess, these are the basic, uh, more two important steps. One is called as the data understanding, and the next one is called as the data preprocess. If these are the very clear into that, when you can create the model very well, and you can evaluate, and you can deploy onto the, uh, uh, in the market or in the anywhere uh, as you require. So what are the tools we require for the data sciences? So these are the tools, uh, or maybe there are the more tools are the present right now into the uh, society or maybe into the market. We can use it for the data preparations, exploratory analysis, uh, for the inferences or the predictions, we can go for the Python or R, for the solution implementations, more about uh, Python or uh, R may into that the result. Uh, the last one is for the visualizations. We'll go for the Excel or maybe another tools also we can use it. So every phase is uh, it goes for the data uh, science, the different tools uh, we have to use it and the interactions of the tools is required for that. Then you can see one of the application of the data science. So uh, that how to develop as a recommendation system and how to uh, work it uh, related to uh, that the different aspect, the different uh, uh, steps come into that recommendation system. The very first we understand the recommendation system are the program which attempt to predict the item that users may be interested in the best onto the user profile. In the first uh, slide, already I had clear when you work into this digital era, there are the two concepts will come. One is called as a search, and the next one is called as a discovery. So the search is user inspiring the query onto the World Wide Web, what he knows into that. Many times the keywords are not proper. Many times user don't know in the which fashion query is supposed to be the file. The exact query is not there. So then it is called as the search. Then the system understand, there is the system is here. The system understand what is exactly his requirement. How to convert the search to the discovery that is called as a recommendation. 
in a very short and uh, in the one line how to convert the search to the discovery it's called as a recommendation in the technical the recommendation systems are the program which attempt to predict that and that users may be interested based on the user profile maybe sometimes user not fire the exact query exact keywords are not there but but the system understand the recommendation process understand considering is the past history what is exactly is the requirement maybe some of the similar users are present on to the servers and what they are firing and if he is close to uh, this user close to with the existing users from that they understand uh, what are the keyword they want to interact what the keywords are similarity and from that one the uh, items or maybe the information passed to the users and that is called as the recommendations it predicts recommendation systems predicts what is the requirement of the users considering the past history if the user is totally new what will do into that one i'll come into that point but right now you consider the user is accessing the servers you are accessing some sort of the website frequently but many times when accessing into that one we don't know how to fire the query and from that one how the system support for uh, the users to convert the search to the discovery uh, that uh, that's phenomena is called as a recommendation system or it is called as a recommender system the process is called as the recommendations and the, when you develop the model it's called as a recommender system so if you talk about the mathematically Uh, how the recommender system uh, is defined? The recommender system. So when you there are the two. Uh, uh, the first is the users. The number of users are the present, and next one is called as a recommendable items. If you see into that, the best example I'll give into that the Amazon.com. See uh, right now why the Amazon.com is so much popular because through the Amazon uh, we we'll get from uh, we we'll get from the A to the Z. that's why they given as a bar from a to the z in the symbol everything whatever you want will available into the amazon and the amazon reach to the very remote places uh, just uh, morning i reached from my native place to here so the, in the remote places where there is the problem for to reach to the native places there is no road there also amazon reach and they are delivering the product into that the such a such a remote places why because they adopt the concept of the uh, discovery they know how to do the business uh, in the in the this the digital era so very work with is the recommendation system the two very important the, the first one is the users and next one is the recommendable atom you should require the all the items which is required for the users related to that business so that is called as a recommendable item is yes and the number of users is called as a c and when taking the cartesian product of these one then it is called as utility functions measure the usefulness of the items to the user c that is called as a utility how to give the exact informations to the users as per the requirement is called as a recommendation system and that is called as a utility functions for the each users you want to choose the atom so that it can maximize the utilizations so this utility functions is uh, there is a noise little bit if uh, can you mute i don't know who is uh, there is a little bit voice for the each users we want to choose the atom uh, yes that maximize the utility the utility means uh, how uh, the when the user is far in the query and whatever the information is coming can it 100% the match uh, that is called as uh, utility functions and uh, that uh, when you developing as recommended system uh, that we have to measure it uh, so we'll see how to measure that one so why the importance of these recommendation system in this uh, digital era so uh, some of the few points about first is the netflix in the netflix out of three the two users the movie watch are through the recommended 
when you go for the uh, watch the movie from the three the two first see the recommendation if the recommendations are the proper related to that movie then they go for the to watch the movie next is the google news recommendation generate 38% from the click through next one is amazon 35% sale from the recommendations trust him 28% of the people would be more uh, music if they found and what they like and the last one is the acm recommended system conference and the workshop related to the field this is a uh, last one related to the acm recommendation system acm also developed their the own recommendation system and from that uh, we can see which is the good conference related to the my subject related to the my domain you can find out which is the a grade or it's come to the b grade or if you see into that the workshop which contain are the more appropriate related to me and from that the acm give the recommendations so that is called as the acm recommendation system which is what a very uh, uh, clearly and uh, very systematically working into the uh, this research point of view that is called as the acm recommendation system so these are the some examples where the recommendation is much more popular and they are really doing wonders in the different fields so what's the function of the recommendation system what exactly to do the recommendation system so the very first one is increase the number of items sold the best example you can see for the amazon amazon reach to the very remote places also because in this the uh, pandemic situation everyone is online they want to give the orders in the online so at almost all, uh, where is the internet present there is the amazon present and there is the uh, selling of the item items are sold and there they have used the recommendation system sell more the diverse items the, for example is the netflix increase the user satisfaction this is the very much important thing to that what exactly user required we are giving the matching information to the users at the same time we are giving what's the review about the users what the users say which is like who which are the like minded people which think like you and they are giving what's the thoughts related to the item related to the pattern and now that satisfaction gives to the user then increase user the fidelity recommender output can be effectively customized to match your the user preference so this again the very important functions of the uh, recommendation system then the last but one is better understanding what the users wants sometimes the words are not proper sometimes the user confuse what want to say the system understanding what exactly his requirement considering the past history and from that the exactly output will use to the users that's called as better understanding and finding all the good items so when you search on to the internet many times the information not proper you are confused or uh, sometimes we not satisfied with the informations or we not satisfied with the items but definitely it sure into that if you use the recommendation system and we are working uh, frequently that recommendation system and 100% will get the items what you require we are getting all the items uh, 100% as per your requirements so that's called as a finding the all good item as per your the requirement so when you developing as a recommendation system Uh, what uh, the different steps will become? What is the basic architecture of the recommender system that we call as a framework? So the framework when we talk about the recommendation system is two level. One is come as offline. Next one is called as online. In the online, uh, we are uh, into that the users are uh, directly connected. To the portal, first they give and they want. and after that the next part is uh, started that is called as offline the total learning process from the variety of these they are taking the inputs your the profile try to match with the other profiles and they understand what the others user interest and the, how the other user interest match to your interest and from that it generate some sort of the information and this informations they try to convert into the knowledge and that all the process is present here in the offline world. that is called as a learning process so 
in the learning process, whatever the input give first online, when the users are starting, they try to match with the different users. So what the users search into that, what the keyword they have used, and these keywords is matches to your keywords. If some keywords are the missing and how these keywords are embedded into the your profile, and after that, you do the information to the users. This is the part is coming to the offline, which is happened into the backside, and it is called as uh, inside the system. So this uh, is uh, some sort of the uh, framework. These are the different steps. It's come to the offline, to the online. So this part is more ever into that, the left side, it comes to the offline, and this more related the part here, it comes to the online. So there are the variety of the inputs are the present. The very first, it's talk about the inputs. We'll talk about the inputs. So the so many users are the present. They have the uh, uh, some preferences, explicit, implicit, then some sort of the explicit rating, implicit ratings, sometimes inputs taking the directly. So these all are matches here that is called as a user's profile. And when the user's profile is clear, after that, the, we are developing the different learning models. The learning models, uh, I'll come into that, maybe as a content uh, filtering, with collaborative filtering, or a habit filtering, or maybe as a context filtering. So different models develop. There are the different algorithm, machine learning algorithm you have to use it. And after this machine learning algorithms generate the output, and that output is called as a recommended output. Or the, this, this is called as, a, this is the recommended patterns. And the users that use that the recommended uh, informations or items, and after that, they will take as a decision. And that is called as a, a, a recommended system process. Let's, we'll see into that, what the broader categories into that one. We are more interested into that one, how you develop the learning models. How you develop this one, the learning models of the recommended system. Uh, the broad categories, there are the, four types. The very first one is called as a content-based recommended system, then it's uh, come as a collaborative recommended system. Then one of the new approach, it's coming uh, since last uh, six, uh, five to six years, that is called as a context server recommendation system. And uh, after that, which is the combination of all these one, that is called as a hybrid recommendation system, which uh, use into the day-to-day -day life. So first we'll discuss about the recommendation system uh, you know, related to the content-based, or it is also called as a content-based recommendation system. Here, the recommendations are based on to the informations on the user content of the item rather than on the user's opinion. Its name is clear about the content. When about talk about the content, the opinion is a different part. Opinion, you are not taking considered content of what the community you are firing what the text is there, how uh, your the uh, keywords are firing, and according to that the information uh, that uh, uh, learning models uh, takes the input and uh, they try to convert that the input into the informations. Here in this content-based recommendation system, the machine learning algorithms you take the preference from the example based onto the description of the content. For example, if you want to search any particular the item so then when you uh, describe let's you want the mobile so you're describing into the form of keyword we want for the apple then you are putting into that some sort of the features then you put up some sort of the specifications or also at the end of you're putting some sort of the price so all these the keyword that is called as the descriptions and that's called as a description of the content related to that item if something is missing, something, some features you are not added into that one, considering uh, the whatever the inputs you are giving, whatever the uh, description you are giving, so that is matches with the other profile. And some of the keywords are present that uh, other profile that will take it into yours. And considering all the keywords, all the descriptions, uh, that's given to the machine learning algorithm. And from that, it's uh, generate the information. So uh, let us, this is the, uh, more about the content-based recommendation. Recommended items similar to those users prefer in the past. For example, recommend the items customer C similar to the previous item rated high to the C. What is happening to the content-based recommendation? It's similar to the, those users preferred into the past. Let's, I'm firing one of the query. And if the my user profile is matched with the another users, 
and if he is also having if some items uh, that another users uh, purchase or they uh, frequently use that the information that information that input also comes to the me so here we are matching the users profile the keys are the matches and these all these the key or the keywords it's nothing but is called as item content or the easily it's denoted by the keywords the matching user preferences with the item characteristics works with the textual informations in the content base the everything into the form of the text what do you want you have to express into the form of the words if the words are the not proper then the system is not understand the proper normally happen into the search engine but what the solution is given to the recommendation system that i'll show into that and how exactly it's different from the search engine in the search we are given into that one first we uh, understand for the search engine then how the discovery is happen through this content based recommendation system for example first i'll give an example for the search engine for example i require one item that items are required into the uh, some color which have the red color and only the two shape i know for that one that is something it call as a circle and the triangle one at a one pattern as required so what i'll give on the input three input i'll give in the red color circle and triangle so now the search engine goes into that one so it search they search only the three if this key uh, three keywords are the present and the if these three keywords are present and the search engine given back to the search engine i'm talking about the crawlers search engine and talking about the crawler now the google and uh, so all they are uh, taking uh, they are working in the part of the recommendation system the, the google is the uh, recommendation system even amazon is the search engine if you talk about the alta vista they also work with the uh, recommendation system the best uh, uh, search engine that is called as ask.com which work in the natural language processing so all the search engine they adopt the recommendation system they not now on now in search engine they all are the discovery but now suppose i am developing for the application if i develop in the application for my uh, students then normally i develop as as a crawler it's very difficult to develop as a recommendation system because for that lot of inputs lot of uh, exercise are the required if the normal uh, applications is present they try to come into that the only search they not come into that the discovery because the discovery so many process is required all the data science process you have to take care so what's normal search engine if i given into that the atom as a circle and the triangle and the red colors i'm getting only this only the two part but i don't know there are the so many the patterns are present into the server which i don't know and i'm not uh, able to express uh, very clearly also i don't have the proper keywords to extract the information from the server then how the uh, search engine works and now the uh, all the googles or maybe ask.com or whatever be so all the whatever the inputs are given to you it's coming the red circle and the triangle so these are all the inputs the profile users profile to match with the other profiles but other users they uh, ask for the different shapes also someone ask for the square someone ask into the hexagon with the different color also and such type of the information is available but as a layman user just like me i know only the three three words i know these only the pattern presents only the circle and the uh, triangle with the red color but there are the so many things are the present which don't know and also i am confused how to find the query then the content base give us the solutions this matches your the profile your the keyword with the other users and already they are fired and uh, whatever they got the information this all the information is used to the users and that is called as the recommendation and this recommendation is nothing but it is called so in the content base here if you talk about the content base it is totally work with the keyword it is totally work with the keyword it is nothing related to the, in the form of voice or into the form of the for input is goes to the uh, learning model is the keyword and this keyword are matched with another users and after that with the here 
the learning model works and this learning model gives the information and this information is used to the users. So that is called as a content-based uh, recommendation system. So there are a the lot of research already happened in this content-based recommendation system. So many researchers work in this area. They develop the different, different models. So uh, this uh, recommended system concept start the uh, one decade back. So, so many people work into that one and they are given the solutions onto the different applications. So a uh, few examples of these are the recommended system. And this is the name of the researchers and they have used the such a techniques. So when you use this content-based recommended system, what are the problems? Why you go for the uh, another methods? Okay, this is very easy. When you talk about the recommended system, very first is the input is a keyword. When the input is a keyword, definitely, to develop the model, it's somewhat easy. But if you see the other side, sometimes it's difficult also. Each system having the pros and the cons. The cons is something like that. That we call as limitations. So very first is finding the appropriate teachers. Let's I want to watch some movie and that movie, I'm not expressing the proper the keywords. You cannot express the movie into the proper keywords, they be related to the image and the same with the music. If the item we can describe, but if something is into the form of the image and the movie and the music, it's very difficult to express into the form of keywords. And when the keywords are the, not the proper, so definitely whatever the output will come from the, the content-based segment system, it's not much more precise. Definitely the learning model work into that one, but the, uh, the system also has some sort of the limitations. If the keywords is already present, then and then it can match it and it's used to the uh, users. If at all keywords not present and you are giving something very different inputs, which is not all matching at all, then it's very difficult for uh, the content-based segmentation system. Overall specialization, it's second issue, where the never the recommend the item outside the user content profile. That's again the and given the three input, that is the triangle, circle, and the red color. These are the basic inputs for that one. And whole you are the output, the information it's come, it's related to this input only. Apart from that, uh, the system uh, will not work, they not think much more over there. So that's over specialization is not, people might have the multiple interests, but they're not able to express. Hard to explain. The quality judgment for the other users. So what other users want, we are not taking care here. The opinion you are not taking care into that. Just you are matching the keyword to the keyword. If the keyword match, uh, we are working into that one. But the opinion you are not taking care of the judgment of the users. It's not taking care. And that it's uh, all these the limitations try to overcome into the next that is called as a collaborative recommendation system. In the collaborative recommendation system, its name is called as a collaborative. Uh, collaborative means comes all together and discuss into that and after that we will uh, give to the input to the learning model. So here the task of the filtering user preference on the new items by collecting the text information from the many users. What the opinion of the other users related to the items related to the patterns we are taking after that we are giving uh, recommendations to the active users out to the live users. Here are the users group whose interests much match to the current user. The very first point it's coming to the collaborative that is called as a grouping. There are the million of the people you have seen into that into the one minute of time, there are the 3.2 billion of the users are present into the online. When the one of the active users will come into that, so these active users, they match. The active user means who wants the information. So their interests try to match with the current users. So the current users keep it into the form of the clusters. So these users try to match with the different clusters and if where it gets the maximum matching, then their user uh, interest is uh, matching with the current users and the information gives to the users. So the more users, more rating, the better results. When the more users, whatever the uh, active users, their uh, uh, views is matches with the maximum people, then the results is the much more better. Can account for the item dissimilar for the ones seen into the past two. 
sometimes what happen uh, some i'll i'll just, uh, talk about uh, here in the last point sometimes atoms are dissimilar to the one seen into the past two some of the atoms which is totally uh, someone is like and someone is don't like but some atom it's very much like and which is not good also but definitely it's taking from the preference it's taking from the user's preference user's interest so sometimes that atom also comes first time that information also comes through this the collaborate so the same way, there are the so many researchers work in this collaborative so many recommendation system develop especially for the elections uh, for the so many levels that equipment is a system presence that working also so so many researchers they use the different techniques so many machine learning data mining algorithm they have used then what is the limitation of these uh, recommendation system so the very first one is the cold start the need to enough other users already in the system to find the match if there is no any existing users are the presence so then it's very difficult through this collaborative recommendation system to give the output enough users is required into the system if the users are the less so definitely the whatever the output will come through the recommended system it's not much more precise sparsity problem typically large product set and the few users get for example the amazon i'll give the one example in a catalog of 1 million of the books the probability that the users who bought the 100 books is have the one book in common then it's come as a 0 0.01 take the another into that in a catalog 10 million books are the present and the probability that the two users who bought the 50 books each have the book in the in the comma is called as a point zero 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 two see what exactly here if you talk about the sparsity item is the present if the all the atoms are rated very properly things and the user will get as the very good viewers or maybe very few atoms are the presence then it's a difficult uh, to give the uh, retrieve the information from the, the recommendation system for example uh, there are the one atom is the present it is totally new which is the best product the best book is the product i can say is the book is a very it's completely new book would and which is come into the market and the amazons uh, it's uh, trying to promote for that one but when it is totally new no one given as a rating for that one no one is uh, review that particular the book there is no rating for that one when there is no rating for that one then for how this uh, book will be pop up how will come into that the upper level when it not come into the upper level so then no one can be purchase a book so this concept is called as the sparsity problem so the collaborative filtering or the collaborative recommendation system must have the number of users 10 percent of the product catalog size so this is one thumb rule they are mentioning so whatever your the catalog is having at least 10 percent of the product catalog size the number of users are the presence then and then that atom will be the pop-up then how to create that is one sort of the technique 100 percent user product catalog size so you have to sometimes you have to take the uh, explicitly and implicitly you have to create that one uh, in the recommendation system so that's again the sparsity problem how to create that is one sort of the issues and that is again the research problem Next one is the new atom problem. Cannot the recommend the atom that has not been previously rated? Just I'll give an example of the book. Next one, it is come to the totally recommended system is work with the popularity basis. It cannot recommend the atom someone with uniquely feel. For example, uh, the atom uh, come into the system into the uh, the digital era. 
five years back, no issue. But to, that atom is recommended by only one and two persons only, and which is Junan. But no one recommending to that one related to the maybe the price or maybe something the different uh, features present with that concern issue. Don't recommend that one. But don't recommend that that particular atom. It is not pop and it not sell into the market. So that issue is present. It is totally worth into the popularity basis. Then so the recommend into the it's totally into the popularity level. So these are the issues related into the. Uh, uh, collaborative recommendation system then i'll come into the part i'm audible yes sir yes, yes sir, sir. Okay. yeah okay, okay thank you thank you the next uh, type of this one context aware recommendation system so what is the context recommendation system when you talk about the content based recommendation system which work completely in the textual fashion the keywords are the input to that one and the keywords are goes into the learning models so in the learning model the keywords are matching with the, all the users which is present into the system the learning model work into that one the machine learning and the data mining algorithms work into that one and after that when the matching is present such related information is used to the users next is work into that the collaborative in the collaborative you are the user profile matches with the existing users not only the keywords, it's your the whole profile is matched. Maybe as a students, maybe related as a professionals, maybe related to the area of interest, considering that when the different clusters are created and in that clusters, your profile is embedded. And after that whole inputs related to that cluster is used to the you. That's coming to that the collaborative recommendation system. The third is the very again the context aware recommendation system. This is a very important concept now uh, in the last uh, five years that's come into uh, field. In the, uh, that people want the context recommendation system. Context is a dynamic set of factors describe the state of the user at that the moment and the user experience. It's somewhat difficult to implement as compared to the users and the collaborative that the content. So what is the context into that? It is totally dynamic set of factors describe the state of the users at the moment of the user's experience. Users uh, work uh, very in the dynamic set. So system understand the dynamics and work according to that and give the information to the users. Let's I'll give the uh, example into that one. The, let's say into the morning, I have to uh, listen some sort of the music. So the songs of morning. So the system understand into that one, what is the uh, time when you are firing the query? We'll talk about the morning, what should be the environment? What should be the mindset? And according to that, what sort of the output supposed to be given? When you want to watch the movie, when you watch the movie, I want the movie with my family. I want to the movie with my friends. I want to the movie with my colleague. I want to the movie with my the students. What the inputs we are giving, what's the dynamics we are giving, the sets of uh, context we are giving, the system understand that when, and according the output is given. So the context factor is rapidly changed and affect how the users, receives and the items. So the, uh, what type of the informations we require related to the context is called as a context recommendation system. So what are the context components are the present? The very first is called as a mood of the, the item. Just I've given the example, watch the movie. Next one, who is expressing the item with, for example, if I'll talk into that one, some sort of the food. Who else expressing to the atoms? If uh, with my friends, what food I prefer into that one? If uh, if I'll go uh, with my the uh, uh, friends or into the party, what the experience? What sort of the atom we are interested into that one? So that's next one is the where expressing the atoms. 
so the listening the music at home is something different listening music into the garden is something else listening music at the time of the uh, driving is something different so that's called as a verb expressing the atoms and next one is the when so that's related to the time and one more into that uh, in the very very special occasions what type of the let's uh, in the somewhere of the party the present in the party which type of the music is supposed to be used so here uh, in the earpods it's given the very much dynamic it's related to the context and according that system supposed to be understand and that match uh, with the variety of the inputs present into the sets and they develop one of the learning model and used to the user that is called as a context recommendation systems uh, some of the example into that one we talk about the context uh, uh, recommendation system uh, the inputs are very rapid it's come as a temporal data the data with the time next one the special data because the special it comes to the locations it comes to the home you are present as a workplace these are the special locations are the presents and from that you, uh, you want uh, the informations the time uh, the morning what you want the afternoon what you want the evening what you want related it comes to the time and also very important it comes to the social it's related to the domain uh, what's uh, the informations more related to the friends what you pass on what related information you can pass with the family what information you pass related to the kids so these are the three different types of the variety of the inputs we come it is called as a spatial temporal data spatial as well as the temporal and from that we are generating the recommendation system it's a really tough to generate this type of the recommendation system and sometimes uh, it's not Uh, in, uh, whatever the output will be come, it's not much more precise as per the requirement of the users. Because uh, definitely here the challenges are the much more as compared to the content based and the collaborative. But definitely there are the few uh, recommendation systems are available which use the solutions on this context of recommendation system. So this. Uh, now i'll come into that the part that is the hybrid recommendation system when you discuss about the content based recommendation system collaborative or third is the context recommendation system each one having the pros and the cons but then one more concept will coming into that can you combine everything together the content collaborative as well as some part of the context recommendation system and then it's developed as a hybrid recommendation system the hybrid recommendation system combine the content collaborative and the context aware based recommendation system to overcome the individual limitations so the each one having the pros and the cons so whatever the limitation present for the each uh, recommendation system if if you combine everything if the those are the advantage those are the plus points of uh, every recommendation system you take it and if you build up one of the model so then it is called as a hybrid recommendation system and there so many uh, hybrid recommendation systems are available whatever the amazon developed that is present as a uh, uh, hybrid recommendation system netflix even the acm also that's completely hybrid recommendation system so in the last five years so whatever the recommendation system that uh, which can, uh, combines the content collaborative and the some part related to the context so what are the different approaches for these one what are the uh, different way to combining the content collaborative and the context recommendation system so the very first one is implement individually content collaborative and the context after that we can combine maybe some content uh, some part if you take for the content and some part for the collaborative first uh, develop the complete content after that use the output of the content to the collaborative and uh, use to the Uh, uh users or the vice versa first develop the collaborative and then develop the content maybe add the content methods into the collaboratives and the last one can you generate one sort of the unified model that incorporates all three so i written only both but uh, uh, sometimes we are caring only for the content and the collaboratives and sometimes we require the all three also 
So we are developing as a model that is called as a unified model that incorporates both contained collaborative or some part of the contained segmentation system. That's called as a unified model. You developed your the own models where you require the input for the content, you add it, where you require for the collaborative, you add it, where you require the context, you add it. And it's come as a own unified model. It's completely new and not present as a existing, which work in the content and the collaborative. So normally uh, the research is goes for the last one to develop the hybrid recommendation system. They develop their the own unified model. So there are the uh, so many research already happened in the hybrid recommendation systems. So so many research they develop the hybrid recommendation systems. So these are the example for that one. Uh, in the nowadays, especially for the elections, so this hybrid recommendation system may be recently used into the uh, UK, even the USA also has used the, the, the elections uh, uh, for the election recommendation system. Uh, for the all, uh, maybe for the, even the Amazon also use, Netflix also use, so many, whatever the uh, live models are the present, these all are the hybrid recommendation system. So if you see into the last one, that is the fuzzy recommendation system, in the fuzzy techniques also use, the fuzzy logic also use. So, so many times we cannot go for the very clear on and off zero and the one. You have to go into the somewhere the precise, in the fuzzy occurs you have to require. Then it comes to the fuzzy recommendation system. This fuzzy recommendation system is used for the election. So where uh, this, uh, uh, the scientist is Anderson, they have developed the first uh, fuzzy recommendation system for the election. And that the little bit some modification happened into that one. The UK and the USA, they use this the fuzzy recommendation system for the election campaigns. So when you discuss about uh, the first contain, when it comes to the collaborative, when it comes to the context, and then uh, we discuss about the hybrid recommendation system. Then uh, from this, we can understand what are the trends into the recommendation system. If someone who wants to continue in the field, where uh, they can work, where, uh, what are the issues uh, they can elevate. So these are the some points uh, where uh, we have the opportunity to work on it. The very first one is poor understanding of the users and the data. The side clearing to that the data science process also, that's called as the pre-processing. So many times uh, the input, it's not come as it is what required for the systems. We not understand because the data has come to the variety of the forms. The data is complete, uh, sometimes incomplete, duplicate data is present, the data is not into the proper format, maybe related to the users, maybe related to the items. Because if you talk about the requirement as a system, it is the Cartesian products about the users and the items. You have to match it into that. When you have to match it, you are the matrix should be the very proper format. If this is clear, then definitely, then whatever the algorithms we are developing, definitely you have to generate some of the new algorithm to do the more precise, but the input should be the very much property part. So here, now we are able to describe the items, how to describe that. For example, related to the image, related to the audio, related to the audio, video, how these the descriptions come into the, your the matrix. Uh, that's the for the keyword it's not so much difficult but especially the data which happen in the multi uh, media format maybe uh, that's uh, audio or the video and the image how to describe and how to convert into the proper keyword format which understand the server or the server engines very correctly that's again the challenge the scalability problems right now whatever the algorithm used by the researchers they're considering only the structured data, the text data. But the input for the recommendation system is come to the big data, which has the volume, which have the velocity, which have the variety. When this uh, different type of the parameters are the presence, the three views presents for this, the big data, the inputs to the recommendation system, the variety of the data is coming, the volume of the data is coming, and which is the heterogeneous in the nature. And at the same time, the users also increasing. 3.2 million users present active in a single unit of time. 
at any moment of time on the internet, if you see 3.2 millions. So million of users are the present, so billion of uh, the atom information is present. So the scalability increases over there. It's scaling very rapidly. So the existing algorithms, they struggle to uh, match or they struggle to learn this, uh, all types of the input. Then you have to develop your the own algorithms. For example, for the clustering, the, all the researchers to achieve the scalability issue, they develop, uh, they work with the K-mean scale, uh, metoid, maybe uh, fuzzy recommended system, they use the FCM. But they are considering very limited data. But since the last five years, the, uh, the users of the internet using very rapidly. And they are struggling about this, the scalability problems. So where in the scalability, we have to generate our own algorithm, which work out this all these three V. We tackle with the variety of the data, with the volumes, with the velocity. So give the solution for that, we have to generate some of the new algorithm, cold start. Some of the users, it's completely new. How to tackle it? How to work it for that one? Because he is totally new. He's not existing users. Or maybe something new atoms, which is very good, but no one has a preference for that one. No one is rated for that one. No one is like for that one. Then when no one is like into that one, then how this information is retrieved? That is called as the cold start. Lock of contextual awareness. So the context requirement as a system is again one sort of the difficult challenge. How we understand the mood of the one users, it's totally in the dynamic. From the one second to the another second, the mood changes, the environment changes, the scenario changes and relate to that one, generate the information. It's a really uh, difficult charge, uh, a difficult challenge in the requirement of the system. The early rating and the first rating problem which rated the first, sometimes the item is good, but is rated very few persons. Then when you have to pop up such type of the items, what sort of the remedy you have to consider, what sort of the algorithm you have to generate into the system. Because of that, the item will become, just I'll give an example, at least 10% of the rating is required to pop up the items onto the systems. So that's come on that item, it's come in the collaborative. So how to go for that one? That is called as early or the first rating problems. So these are the some challenges where the if you take the one or the two the challenges we can uh, continue the area in this recommendation system. Now uh, how this recommendation system develops? So I'll work into uh, already I have worked uh, in this area the, uh, the recommendation system. I developed a long back. So uh, that case study I'll explain to you, uh, which name is called as a habit personalized recommendation system using the center benching based clustering. So I try to uh, give the solution out to these the scalability problems, how to solve these the scalability problems. So uh, that's the contributions coming to that. So when you develop uh, this the case study, so this uh, model proposed one of the noil center benching based clustering algorithm. Because when I use the existing algorithm, the K-means, K-metoid, fuzzy means when I develop uh, this, then I understand into that. With the uh, variety of the inputs, the, when the volume of the data is increases, these algorithms are struggling and they're not given as a proper output. Then uh, where is the problem come? How to is the scalability? Because is the Excuse me. Continue, sir. Continue. Okay. So this proposed system work into the two phase. The first phase, just I'll clear into that. All any recommendation system is work into the two phase. One is come as an online phase, and second is called as an offline phase. In the first phase, this opinion from the users are collected in the form of the user item vector matrix. Then they are clustered into the offline user clustering bunching cluster uh, uh, center bunching best clustering bunching best clustering algorithm into the PD band number of cluster and store into the database for the future recommendations. So as already I had clear into that, so the any recommendation system is work into the two levels, so offline phase and online phase. From the online phase, when the user is come to the first time, you take the, all the uh, information from the users and that 
it matches to the existing users. In the offline, you are already uh, for all the users and for the, all the actors, you already uh, built up as a cluster. And this new users, just you have to match the cluster centroid information. The match is supposed to be formed. And if where it is matched, which cluster is match uh, related to the users, then whatever the information related to that cluster, which is very appropriate to that to users, is uh, uh, given. So that's the part of the recommendation system. In the second sense, the recommendations are generated in the online. The active users are using the simulator measures by choosing the cluster with the good quality ratings. So this helps to uh, give the effectiveness for the quality of the recommendation for the active users. Let us see from this architecture side clear. So if we talk, the very first is the pre-processing phase. A little bit I tried into that the pre-processing phase. I use the two data sets, uh, one data sets, uh, standard data sets, which is the data dataset. And one of the second data set is for the live data set, that's for the chroma. In the CBD, uh, I have given this whole recommendation system to the uh, CBD, the chroma, which having, which having the, uh, the, at that time, when I implement near about the 7,000 user are the presence, and they are having here about the uh, uh, 1,000, 600 items are the present and that matrix I try to match. So where I try to, uh, first I did the pre-processing onto that one, user item data matrix, we have to do the normalizations, we have to do the pre-processing onto that one. And then it's come as a normalized rating matrix. And that is the input to your the system with the learning model. So where I, for all the items, as well as uh, 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 the users are the present, which come as a normalized rating matrix, for that, I develop as a navigation patterns. In the navigation pattern, they are having a different cluster into that one related to the user's uh, profile match, user's atom profile match. After that, it's come to the recommendation phase, which is present into the online, where the users fire the query. So the output for the, uh, uh, so the input is the navigation pattern, where is happened the content plus collaborative, which is the combinations and the recommendation goes to the users. So this is the pre-processing phase. Uh, so where you have to normalize the data. Uh, so here I did the normalization, pre-process the data. Uh, first I talk about these, the gestured data sets. So first type of the data sets are the present, which is the standard data sets are the present. So these are the users. So uh, just for the understanding, I'll keep it for the 10 users. And one of the active users, which is totally new, which rated the items for, uh, these are the items. J to the J10. And somewhere they're given as rating. Sometimes they are not uh, given as a rating. Now I, I want to, uh, what's the output outcome from this uh, here? So some of the item which don't know by the users, which I suppose to use to the users. Whatever the users are the present, they given the uh, 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 rating into that one. So this item is good, this item is some rating is given. But some items don't know by the user, which is present into the system, and that items we have to use to the users. And from that, we have to understand. So, whatever the item I give us to the users, how much they match it. So, uh, that's the uh, outcome from uh, this the hybrid recommendation system. So, the more important I'm talking about the uh, where I give the contribution into that the scalability that and uh, the scalability issues I had tackled through this the center bunching based clustering. So when I develop as k-means, k-metoid, as such as k-means, I understand into that one. So all these algorithms are the developed very traditional fashion. The considering into that the data sets very standard. There is no pre-processing are the required and everything into that as per the requirement of the system. So then the performance is totally depends on to the manual selection of the centroids. If you take all the clustering algorithms, how, how you chase the your the centroids from that all the approach is the present according to that algorithm works if you are the appropriate centroid not choose then at that time clustering algorithm not use the proper output so the existing k means clustering algorithm initially calculate the centroids so if you talk about the K-means, K-metoids, uh, or maybe for the purchase in this, the first point is coming, randomly selects the centroid. When it selects the randomly uh, centroids for the big data sets, 
that definitely whatever the cluster you are created, that is not appropriate. That is not the quality of the cluster. Then what is the solution into that one? Why not choose the appropriate cluster to give the uh, more appropriate cluster related to your the data sets? So that uh, attrib uh, that actually the contributions we try to give in this uh, algorithm. The proposed cluster algorithm consists of the three steps. Very first is to find the appropriate centroid. Second is the bunching, how to bunch is to form as a bunch. And when you form the bunch, how this bunch remove from the data sets, that is called as a removing of the bunch pattern, that is called as the third. First is form the bunch, bunch means grouping. When you form the grouping, you, uh, when the group is formed, you remove and the same process is repeat, that is called as the third one, the removing bunching the patterns. So here, uh, one points are taken, the number of cluster are constructed depend upon the user's defined parameters. Two user defined parameters are taken as a alpha and the beta. You can take as a any one into that one. So alpha is used for the centering and the beta is used for the bunching. So this is something mathematical. I'll come into the one example from that we can uh, understand very clearly. So let's, uh, these are the users are the presence and these are the two items, J1 and the J2. The users are giving some sort of the rating for this one. And at the end, uh, uh, let's, I'll just give you one second. If you see here, these are the different, these are the users and these are the different items. These are the two dimensions I have taken. Uh, maybe you can take the three dimensions, four dimensions, five dimensions. You can take the n items, no issue for that one. So these are the users and the items is given like this, J1 and J2. Yeah. So the first part, uh, how to find the appropriate centroid. So this whole algorithm is divided into the three part. First, find the appropriate centroid. Second, how to form as a grouping of the atoms. Third is when you form the grouping, how to this grouping remove and do the grouping of the remaining patterns. So first we'll discuss about how to do the grouping. So these are the users is present. So the use users calculate the distance from the another users. Let user is U1. Let's, this is the U1. I'm calculating the distance of U1 from U2, U3, U4, U5, and so on and on. So when you calculate in this time, I'm using the simple accurate distance. When you calculate the distance of U1 with the U2, the distance is come as a 0.2. When calculating distance of U1 with the U10, the, uh, the distance is come as a 1.27. I'm taking the alpha value. That alpha value is called as a 0.2. You can take the whatever, that is the user-defined value. I'm taken as a 0.2. When the distance is less than this threshold, I call as a yes. When the distance is less than equals to the threshold, threshold value of the alpha is 0.2, it's called as yes. And then I uh, increment the counter, the counter I call as a one. When this condition is not matched, let this one here, I'll give one as a no, it, I'm putting as a zero. Then for this, I count the value of all these the atoms, I'm getting the count for the U1 is two. For the user one, I get the count is the two. Like this, I calculate the count for the U2, U3, U4, so, and that I'll adding into that, the uh, I, uh, that I'm displaying in the ascending order. So in the putting into the ascending or the descending orders, so here I put it at descending order for the U1 is count, uh, count uh, total counter is two, for the U2 is two, U3 is two, and so on and on. So what is clear into that one, this counter, he says into that, which is the appropriate pattern to select for the centroid. Previously, we are centering as a randomly. Now we are finding the appropriate, which is the appropriate item to choose for the cluster. Now, how much cluster you require? Let's I require as a four cluster. I have to convert these all this pattern into the four, four cluster. So we require as a four centroid. So when it require as a four centroid, you take this is first one, second, third, and fourth one. So first four are my the centroids. So the how many cluster you require as a four? So first, this is my the first centroid you want. So select such a pattern which counter is the highest. So this is my the highest. 
So here are the same value, but uh, uh, if something value is three, you can take as this one. Right now you can take U2 or the U1, but just I here taken as U1. Then you go for the, if distance of each pattern is less than equals to threshold, here I'm using as the beta because I have to bunch it, I have to group it. So one more condition I apply, if the distance of the each pattern is less than equals to the threshold, then the bunch that the pattern in the cluster. Here also the value of the beta is say 0.2. When this condition is present, you can bunch it. So the U1 is the first one. This is the first U1. So with this, this pattern and this pattern is come to the first cluster. So the first cluster, how many pattern? So U1, so four and two. So this pattern, I think this one pattern is present four and two, this is U2. And the, I think next one is U4. So first three atoms, it's come into the first one. So when it's come, so these are all patterns, I bunch it. And when I bunch it, I remove from my the data set. So what are the remaining pattern remaining? U4 to the ULN remain into the data set. And the same process repeat for the remaining atom to form as a, to select the centroid as well as for the bunching. So the second and the third step, again, we'll repeat, this is the second. So again, you cho choose the second centroid and you bunch it and when you bunch it again you remove it so the same process will review till the no pattern remaining into the data set and when you do this all the process so something will become into that one so these atoms so the u1 and the uh, two and three it's come to the first cluster and this is goes to the second cluster and this is goes into the third clusters and this atom is goes into the next clusters so like that the clustering forms so when the cluster forms, then the next part is come, that is the computing the centroid for the each cluster. So the each cluster having the some patterns, here is the three pattern, here is three, here is three, here is two. Then you form the centroid for the this cluster. Why you have to form? Because when the new user will become, they match with this centroid. Where is the appropriate centroid? Where the centroid is much more matches, then the user is entering into that the cluster. That's why you have to, again, you have to form the centroids. When you form the centroids, then the recommendation process start. What is the recommendation process? Choose the appropriate cluster. When the new user is coming, so the new user is goes to the which cluster? This cluster, this cluster, or this or the last one. So for that, first you have to go for to choose the appropriate cluster. Here you are matching the similarity of the users. When the new user is coming, whatever the preference, whatever the profile that matches with the centroids. Where I'm getting the maximum matching, the user is going into that the cluster. So this is called as a probability. We are calculating the probability for that one. You are calculating the here the similarity. So this is the uh, some statistical fashions are represented that one. Just here matching of the I and J. I is some sort of the active users where I have to match with the existing system. After that, uh, it's uh, not the ended on to uh, there. The next part also start here. The computing the rating quality of the each atom in the choosing cluster. So it's not all the atoms, all the information related to that cluster is given to the active user. It is not like that, which is the much more appropriate there. That information you have to use to the, which is the related to the active users and that information you have to pass to the uh, users. So for that, you have to calculate the competing of the rating quality of the atoms for the each chosen cluster. For that, we have used the max rating plus the average rating two into the max rating. This formula I have generated. And uh, here I'm just doing the smoothing for that. I given the fine tuning of that. The information is already present into that cluster. But within that cluster, which is much more appropriate information we can give to the users for uh, that concept is called as the rating quality of the atoms in chosen cluster. Then from that, those are the information which is not knows by the active users and that information is used to the users. That is called uh, through the rating of the atoms. So here, if you see the J3, J4, J6, J9, so J3 
he is a who is uh, this atom which is not rated by the users but which is very much appropriate to the users and that information is given to the users the user don't know this j3 j3 just you are consider as a maybe joke so this uh, not understand by the user. this type of the joke is not know the users how to fire the query to the users or the users not able to understand how to fire the query and from the whatever the previous item rated whatever the previous jokes rated considering that one the system given the recommendation of jo 3 which is the 0.91% match to the users. So such type of the information is used to the users and that whole process is called as a recommendations. We are giving the recommendations to the active users. So this is the example how this the proposed uh, algorithm works. Uh, uh, just adding the comparison with the iris data sets with the k-means and k-metoids. Uh, such type of the uh, confused matrix is present in the proposed in the uh, for these the 50 classifications and here it's given the 44 and here is present as a 56 actually in the data says in this versus floor it's present as a 48 and here is present as a 52 if anyone given as a 50 50 50 it is totally wrong because data set has clear like this one here is the 50 pattern which satisfies this here is come as a 48 and here is present as a 52 so this propose is given this one 50, 44, and the 56. So the precision, how to calculate uh, for this one, you can calculate the precision. This is the formula to calculate the precision. This is the calculate for the recall. Precision is called as the completeness and the correctness is called as a recall. So in this the fashion, you can develop as a precision and recall. Also, we can uh, calculate the mean absolute error uh, for the, there should be the minimum uh, error required. Uh, when you give on the recommendation system that is called a mean absolute error. So this is the precision and recall as compared with the existing system. So this and recommendation system, there are the so many uh, recommendation systems are the presence. So where uh, I compare uh, my system which gives the better precision as well as the better recall and the minimum uh, mean absolute error. So this is the minimum absolute error as compared to the and Excuse me, systems. sir. Yes, sir. yes. Uh, sir, yes, I think the slide is not moving, sir. You are a bit ahead okay. and the previous slide is displaying okay. on the screen. Okay, now the slide is which one? This one? Mean absolute error right now? No, sir. Centering, bunching, best cluster. Oh, okay, okay, okay. okay. Just give me one. I'll stop sharing. Again, I'll share. Maybe related to the bandwidth is the issue. My screen visible now? No, sir, not, yet. not yet, sir. Now it's visible, sir. Visible, visible. 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 Uh, ma'am. Uh, now on I a, think. Uh, yes, the slide is on a CB. Okay, this one. No? Punching best clustering. Yes. Sir. Okay, fine. Okay. I'll continue again uh, on the same slide. Uh, quickly, I'll uh, revise uh, what is central bunching. Central bunching, uh, taking care about the more into that, how to form the appropriate centroid. So to form the appropriate centroid, the first uh, method, what we did into that one, we have, uh, we have calculated uh, the pattern. Uh, we have calculated the distance of each pattern from other pattern. Let's U1 is the pattern, and these all are the remaining pattern. So calculate the distance of U1 with the U2 with the Euclidians. We have calculated the distance of U1 with the U3 and so on. This is the Euclidean distance of this one. When calculating the Euclidean distance, this distance we match uh, with some sort of the threshold. We calculate, we are putting some conditions. If the distance is less than equals to threshold, the threshold value we are taken as a point. 
0.2. Where if this condition is satisfied, we call as a yes. And if this yes, we are incrementing the counter. When the this condition is not match, we are not incrementing the counters. And at the end, so how much counter is present related to this pattern? So for this UM, the total pat, uh, counter is two. Like that, so we are calculating the counters for U3, U4, and so on. And after that, we are arranging in the descending orders. By out arranging into the descending orders, how many cluster you require? Let's if you require three cluster, you choose first one is the this kind of centroid, second is this one, and second one is this. So like that, you arrange into the descending orders. All these the counter. Let's for this uh, example, we require as a four cluster. So these are the first one. This is the uh, highest counter. Let's go uh, here. The one is the highest counter. So that's why this is the first centroid. So for the bunching, you calculate the distance of each pattern. So the select, this is as the centroid. This is as a centroid as this one. Distance of each pattern with the another. And for that, again, if the distance of each pattern is related to the threshold, then the bunch of that pattern in the cluster. So here that beta value, you are taken again the same as a 0.2. So we are calculating distance of from the centroid to the, all the remaining the patterns. Then you are forming the group. This is the first cluster is formed. And when the first cluster is formed, so this cluster you remove from the original data set. So if you are having the 10 atoms, if you remove these the three, there are only seven other remains. On these seven, repeat the process again the same. Select the appropriate centroid, and then you again do the bunching and remove the pattern. So when you repeat that one, we'll get such type of the clusters. So in the cluster one, three patterns in the cluster two, three patterns in the cluster three, there are the two patterns, and then in the last cluster, we'll be getting in the three patterns. Then again, you have form as a centroid of these one. Why you require again the centroid? Because active users it's match into the cluster. So to match that one, again, you have to form the centroid of that the cluster. How to match, how to calculate this centroid? X1 plus X2 plus X3 divided by 3. Y1 plus Y2 plus Y3 divided by 3. According to that, we get as a centroid. Same we'll do for this one, same we'll do for, same we'll do for the last cluster. Like that, we'll get the centroid for that. So then choose the appropriate cluster. When the new user is coming, already four clusters are the present into the interface. But which cluster you have to match it? For that, this is the process. Choose the appropriate cluster. You have to pass the similarity of that one. Similar. What is the content will come from the active users, and that content you match with the centroid of the cluster. And when you match that centroid, the active users enter into that the uh, cluster. When you enter into that the cluster, whole information of the cluster will not use to the user. Then you have to give some of the filtered information. The process is called as a smoothing. It also called as a give the rating quality of the atom for the each using cluster. And after that, you use the rating. And from that, uh, we'll give here in this example. So one of the atom, let's into that here, that is called as a JIT, which is not rated, which is not fired from the user side. User don't know this particular atom, but this atom is matched ninety percent to the users, and this atom gives the recommendations to the users. And definitely, when the ninety percent is matched, user also likes this type of the atoms. So this is called as a whole recommendation process. So this I try to uh, explain. So uh, always uh, the clustering algorithms uh, try to uh, match with the standard data sets. Iris is the standard data sets. How uh, my the efficiency of my algorithms? how my algorithm is much more accurate for the iris data set I had taken. Where uh, the, I compare with the k-means, k-metroids and the proposed, where it's given the better uh, precision as compared to the uh, k-means and the k-metroid. Why it is uh, given? Here the patterns are present. In this particular, the set so it's present 50. In the vesicular, there are the 48. And the last one in the organa, there are the 52 patterns. Out of 48, 44 comes out of 50, uh, two, the 56 come, which is some pattern move from here to the there. It's not the 100 percent precision come. It's come better as compared to the k means and the k metoids. Uh, so that's the example of the uh, proposed system, uh, proposed uh, central busing. And the whole evaluation process uh, I did using precision, recall, and the mean absolute error. Precision talk about the completeness, recall talk about the correctness, 
the mean absolute how much errors is coming so you evaluate is in this particular the graph so it is a and recommendation system is present previously and among that uh, one more into that i had tell how the precision recall as well as the uh, uh, mean absolute error so that uh, we compare and how the system is better uh, that we try to explain with these the evaluation patterns so this again in the statistical fashion how the values in the precision and the records so then what's the uh, summarize uh, what we understood from this the recommendation system the recommendation system is the important applications for the machine learning recommendation system is a potential to become a, as a importance as search in now that we call as a discovery how are the recommendations more than the machine learning uh, not only the uh, machine learning plays the important role because when you work with the context recommendation system we require the hsi human computer in this, uh, uh, interaction also we all understand the economical model uh, it's uh, apart from the more uh, machine learning there are so many interdisciplinary field you require in the recommendation system so the recommendation system is a still a many of the open questions and lot of interesting research we have to do especially related to the context there are the so many things we can do it the so many challenges still uh, industry facing uh, related to the poor understanding of the data related to the scalability related to the context awareness or maybe uh, related to the uh, uh, rating many times the atoms are not rated many times the users are not given the much more clear uh, preferences clear cut profile so these are the issues is remaining if one of the two issues if you take it and if you continue into that the research so that will again the great contributions to the as a research point of view as an industry point of view or you can give the best model to the society also so the recommended system is not related to the only the business you can work to the uh, medical field you can work into the pharmaceutical field especially for the pharmaceutical and the medical so the recommended system plays a very important role so now it is a need for the atman so uh, many models are right now available for the e-commerce business uh, for the netflix or maybe amazons but right now the industry also shifting how this recommended system can give to for the medical and the pharmaceuticals so that's the great help if someone from your side try to generate some sort of the new learning model related to the application like as a medical or in the pharmaceutical so uh, that's the uh, end uh, that's the uh, conclusion for the today's lecture so these are the few references initial references uh, i not put it the much more into the atom which are the more appropriate or uh, which are the fundamentals uh, for the recommended system some of the books uh, which are related to the machine learning as well for the recommended system that i put it in these references uh, so that's the end of my session if uh, any query from your side or we uh, uh, can open the forum for the discussions uh, i think now again the 10 minutes are remaining so if any query from your sides uh, we can discuss that thank you uh, thank you all of you for your the patience uh, thank you uh, rajiv gandhi institute of technology thank you for the all the organizing committee given me opportunity to share my the views uh, share the my thoughts uh, in the uh, point of the recommendation system thank you once again uh, we can open the sessions for the if any query from your side thank yes, you sir, sir. Yes, sir thank you sir indeed it was a session filled with information now with your permission i would like to take up the question answer session yes sir please uh, if uh, anyone has... i have ma'am i have a question can i ask oh, yes please yeah um good afternoon sir it was a very nice session uh, we could learn a lot of things from this sir uh, in the initial uh, slides you showed that there is some modeling that is done so yeah. what are the uh, different modeling techniques that have been used to model uh, the data yeah. or the information that is what i just wanted to know sir yeah 
Yeah, Thank you. Madam, uh, ma'am, if you talk about the modeling, uh, see, uh, first, before the modeling, first I'll clear about the analytics part. There are the three types of the analytic we require is. First is come as a descriptive analytics. Sometimes we require the predictive analytics. Sometimes we have to work with the prescriptive analysis. When you work with this, what type of the analytics we require from that you have to develop as a models. And when you're developing the models, so we require such type of the uh, machine learning algorithms. So we call as a data mining algorithms for that. For example, if I talk about the uh, predictive models, definitely I require as a, something related to the neural network, related to some uh, related model, uh, uh, maybe into the, uh, which understand the patterns very clearly. And according to that, it's use the uh, predictions to the users. So that is called as a learning model. Learning model means first the system understand the user's pattern. They learn, they train the system. And when the training system train, after that it gives the output to the users. That is the whole process is called as learning models. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Oh, sir, I have a question. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, as you said, and we as we have also seen that uh, medical and healthcare industry has become the utmost priority in today's day and age. So, how can we implement recommendation system in uh, medical field, and what uh, system will be the best suited for it? Yeah, yeah, uh, that's a very good question related to the current scenario. See, right now in this pandemic situation, we all are facing related to the COVID. See, uh, here, uh, if the recommendation system uh, right now uh, in the text format, we are getting into that. If some company, uh, if trying to, uh, let's understand uh, what's the symptoms related to that uh, one particular dialysis. What are the symptoms? That symptoms or maybe some sort of the images I'm giving into that. One. And that images uh, try to match with the other users. So it's just uh, whatever I had developed, it's related to the one uh, related to the pattern related to the e-commerce point of view. But the same thing, if you have to develop for the medical point of view, the very first point of view, how you take the inputs? Are you taking the inputs from in the form of keywords or you put type from the images? If I'm not given to the uh, able to inform of the key keywords, how to give into the form of image? How to give the into form of the video? how to take the uh, input into the form of the idea and these input how you convert into the navigation patterns because in the navigation patterns you have to match your the inputs with the existing users and for that existing users what treatment is uh, going on and can the same treatment we use the same treatment advice we can give to the active users so you have to create some sort of the navigation pattern the very first. And on this navigation pattern, you have to develop the new algorithm because the existing algorithm not work. You have to develop some of the, you have to use the uh, neural network, you have to use the fuzzy neural networks, uh, the communication neural network, or you have to develop some of the modification into that one. And you have to develop your the own learning model. And that learning model gives the uh, uh, output uh, to the active users. Okay, hope sir. you understand. Hope you understand uh, the how you can help out into uh, for the current scenario. Yes, sir. yes, sir. Thank you. There are a few questions from the YouTube live as well. With your permission, I would like to ask those questions on their behalf. Yes, 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 yes please. Uh, one of them has asked, how can we measure the accuracy of the recommender system? Uh, for the measuring the accuracy, we have to go for the precision. Precision is the formula. From that, we can measure the accuracy uh, because uh, there is a difference between the accuracy and the precision. If you see here, uh, I can show the slides to you, how to measure the precision. Yeah. The precision is the ratio of the relevant atom selected to the number of atoms selected. The precision represents the probability that selects the atom in the relevant fashion. So how much atom is present and how this atom is more related to the user point of view, that is called as the precision. 
when you choose the one cluster see first the active user says come the pattern from the active user that you matches with the existing cluster and we are entering into that the cluster and into that the cluster which is more related to to the active users and that in, uh, information is given to the user that is called as a precision so we have to call as a precision the very first point and the next thing is called as a recall whatever the information we are giving to the user it should be the complete if i given to the 10 atoms from the 10 atoms all the 10 atoms have the complete information or out of 10 so the eight atom having the complete and two atoms have the 50% information which which is calculated this is called calculated by the recall the recall is called as the completeness and the precision is called as the correctness these are the two parameters to evaluate the recommendation system precision and the recall as well as we can go for the mean absolute error which calculate how much error into the prediction so the uh, it is the statistical accuracy uh, matrix mean absolute error which calculate the measures of the pre uh, predictions how your the prediction is the uh, if the prediction is a very minimum error you are the model is the best one thank you sir uh, also recommending systems are as strong as the data set provided to it where yes. to refer for good data sets from industrial and personal projects point of view ma'am if you visit to the california data sets uh, there are the so many data sets they are available if you visit to the california university refer uh, visit uh, the california test they are having the different data sets that we use for the uh, recommendation system standard data set we call okay and uh, the last question would be can you name some uh, algorithms that are used in recommender systems in ai uh yeah ma'am uh, actually if you talk about the uh, which type of the recommendation system you want for example if you develop as a content the standard algorithms that we use as a k means uh, then the classification algorithm like as the decision tree that are used uh, for the collaborative uh, the algorithms uh, that are little bit upper versions uh, like as a uh, where uh, more uh, those are the modified somewhere uh, modified as a k metoid somewhere modified as a k means that modified version is come but if you talk about the context aware recommendation system where we require as a more algorithm into the uh, neural network point of view all the cnn models communication neural network or maybe as a uh, feed forward network so these are the required because here the you have to understand the context and according that we have to give the input first you have to train your the system according to the requirement and after that uh, you have to give to the output so the uh, ai algorithms more uh, or neural network algorithms neural uh, that we can use somewhere the regression algorithm also required to that and if you combine all these three then uh, you have to use the all the algorithms that uh, work into the uh, neural network or maybe for the machine learning Oh, thank you, sir. Also, there's a question in the Zoom chat stating if you could uh, share your PPT. Yes, yes, ma'am. I'll share. I'll share you, and then you can pass on to all. Okay, sir. Okay. Uh, if there are no further questions, I would like to conclude the question answer session. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Now I would like to invite Boni Pai to propose the vote of thanks. Thank you so much, sir. He has given good insight on the topic of trends in recommender systems. On behalf of NCT's Rajiv Gandhi Institute of Technology and Department of Computer Engineering, Organizing Committee of Online Faculty Development Program, and on my own behalf, I extend a very hearty word of thanks to Dr. Subhas Sunday Sir for accepting our invitation as a resource person and spending his valuable time with us. Hello. Oh. I would like to inform all that the second oh, session yeah. will be after a break of an hour, and the link will be shared via WhatsApp. Okay. Uh, thank you, one and all. So, can I leave the meeting?
yes sir thank uh, you thank you very much thank sir you, thank you thank you thank you sindhya sir thank you thank very you much. sir thank you kasne sir thank you thank you sir thank you